Yes, you read the title right. And no, this is not clickbait. As Gerald McCoy would say, I don't think he was born, you know, naturally. I truly believe he was like generated and put together. I too am somewhat of a believer that Dion Primetime Sanders was literally made in a laboratory. Judging off of the research I've done, the stories I've heard, and what I'm about to tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if most of you guys join me in on this belief. With that being said, here is proof that Dion Sanders could have been made in the laboratory. Starting us off at number six, we've got game preparation. When it came to preparing for a game and watching film, Dion was like a director. According to Dion, he would carry a VHS tape recorder wherever he went. Whether he was in the weight room, locker room pre-game, on the team plane, if you saw Dion, you likely saw his recorder with him, watching film. He studied the game like no other. Where most cornerbacks would only study their receivers they were about to match up against, Dion would study them and more. Dion would study, in his words, quote, coordinators, coaches, quarterbacks, and lastly, receivers. Pretty much the entire offense, all week, up until moments before kickoff. Primetime was literally obsessed with learning all the ins and outs of not just his matchup, but the entire team's defensive matchup, which is likely a big factor in why he was who he was. Number five, Razor Focus. When it came to being focused on the game ahead of him, few ever did it like Deion Sanders. Some players chatter up prior to games to stop feeling nervous. Some players talk to family members prior to the game and some teammates give pep talks to fire each other up. But not Dion. He didn't do any of that. Prior to games, Dion wouldn't talk to anyone, not even his teammates, because he was simply that focused. When it came to game time, there was only one thing on Dion's mind. That thing was getting the win, and when it came to the actual game itself, most of the time, Dion wouldn't even talk to his opponents because, quote, his game was too loud. This Razor-like focus helped Dion become a multiple-time Super Bowl winner, Pro Bowler, All-Pro, and one of the greatest corners ever. Number 4. Multiple Positions in Football It takes a very special player to be able to play multiple positions in football. It takes different skill sets and athletic traits to be able to perform at a given position and not every person is capable of doing so. Today, we've got guys like Taysom Hill, Patrick Peterson, and Julian Edelman. But before all of these guys, there was a man by the name of Deion Sanders. Although primarily being a cornerback, Deion Sanders was known to suit up as a punt slash kick returner, wide receiver, and even a running back. Aside from the freak numbers he put up as a cornerback, Dion amassed a total of 3,523 kick return yards on 155 returns for 3 touchdowns and 2,199 punt return yards on 212 punt returns for a total of 6 punt return touchdowns. He also has 784 career receiving yards on 60 receptions along with 3 touchdowns and has 4 carries for 39 yards and 1 touchdown in the NFL postseason. Although he wasn't the first multi-positional player in the NFL, and also maybe not the best, I feel like Dion really set the stage for the modern day multi-positional players. Back when Dion entered the NFL, he was only the third two-way starter to ever exist. Now, you could name at least five off the top of your head, and I gave you three freebies earlier. Before I move on to the next one, let me leave you with one more crazy stat I'm sure will floor you. Deion Sanders is only one of two players in the entire history of the NFL to score a touchdown in six different ways. He scored off of an interception return, punt return, kickoff return, fumble recovery, as well as having both a rushing and receiving touchdowns. Number three, multi-sport athlete. It's one thing to play multiple positions in a single sport. It's a completely different thing to simultaneously play multiple sports at the highest level at the same time. Yes, you've likely heard of the countless number of guys who've been star athletes at football and basketball in high school, 
or football and track in college. But it's a whole other thing when you're a star in both professional football and professional baseball simultaneously. Even some of the greatest athletes of all time like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Antonio Gates, John Elway, and so on stuck to one sport once they became eligible to become pro. Some athletes either aren't good enough in their second respective sports to play professionally, some athletes can't take the wear and tear of playing multiple sports, but Dion isn't like the others. Just looking back in history to May 16th, 1987, when Dion was attending Florida State University, there were two events being held simultaneously in Columbia, South Carolina that day. The Metro Conference Baseball Championships and the Metro Conference Track Championships. Dion, being the man he was, was obviously a member for both teams. Instead of choosing to participate for one team, focusing on winning one championship, Dion decided to participate for both teams that day. He played in the conference semifinal baseball game against Southern Mississippi, ran the leg of a four times 100 relay, then returned to play in the baseball championship game against Cincinnati. Insane if you ask me. He carried this multi-sport lifestyle into the pros, where he played in both the MLB and the NFL simultaneously. And it wasn't like he was a bum in either. He played a total of nine years in the majors with five teams, racking in 39 homers, 168 RBIs, and 186 stolen bases, all while being at the top of the NFL as the league's best cornerback, earning himself nine first-team All-Pro selections, one Defensive Player of the Year award, and widely being regarded as the greatest cornerback the NFL has ever seen. Let me also mention that he is the only man in history to hit a major league home run and score an NFL touchdown in the same week, and that he's the only man to ever play in both the World Series and a Super Bowl. Madness! Although many people urge Dion to only focus on one sport, like 99.99% of pro athletes before and after him, Dion refused and often stated, quote, football is my wife and baseball is my mistress. Number two, don't draft me. For most football players, their greatest dream is to hear their name called at the NFL draft regardless of the round or the team they were selected by. Just hearing your name being called on the podium on the day of the draft is a blessing in and of itself. But like I've said before, Dion is in most players. Just listen to the story from the 1989 NFL draft that demonstrates just how confident a 22 year old Dion Sanders was, who mind you not, hadn't even played a single snap in the NFL at the time. A month prior to the draft, the New York Giants, who were interested in drafting Deion Sanders with the 18th overall pick, called him in for a pre-draft interview. When they brought Deion in, they gave him a very thick textbook that Deion claims was, quote, thicker than a phone book. Surprised, Deion wondered what the book was for, and the Giants management replied it was an assessment test they gave all their potential draftees in order for them to assess who their pick should be. In response, Dion asked them, quote, what pick do you have in the draft? To which they responded, 10th pick. Dion simply got up, told them, quote, I'll be gone before then. I ain't got time for this. And simply just left. Even prior to the Giants, the Detroit Lions had the third overall selection and had their eyes on Dion. When they met with him, Dion had a similar approach and straight up threatened to play baseball had they drafted him or would have requested so much money they had to put me on layaway. If you thought this the confidence and swagger like that is rarely seen in an eight-year superstar MVP caliber player negotiating a five-year $250 million offer, let alone a player yet to play a snap in the league. To straight up tell multiple teams, don't draft me, is as bold of a move as you can pull and further justifies my reasoning for why I think Deion Sanders wasn't made naturally. And rounding us off at number one, sub 4-2, 40 yard dash. Yeah, no need to clean your ears after hearing this one, because you heard me right. Deion, primetime Sanders, supposedly ran a 40 yard dash in under 4.2 seconds. 
If you're not too familiar with how extraterrestrial that is, let me help you realize how a performance like this shouldn't even exist. Just looking at an NFL combine report generated between the years 2000 until 2012, for all players who have played a total of at least five games in the NFL, the fastest positions were cornerbacks and wide receivers with an average 40 yard dash time of 4.48 seconds. Meaning Deion Sanders had a faster time by a third of a second than half of the fastest players in the league. To understand the significance of that difference, cornerbacks and wide receivers average one third of a second better for the 40 yard dash than defensive ends. Guys who are typically between 285 to 315 pounds. The difference in speed between the average 300 pound defensive lineman and the average cornerback, again, who are the fastest guys in the league, is the same difference between the average cornerback slash wide receiver and Deion Sanders. If this supposed time was actually to be true, it would mean Deion Sanders would be the only man in the history of the entire National Football League to have a 40 yard dash time under 4.2 seconds, with the closest player being John Ross having a time of 4.22 seconds. To put that in perspective, Olympic runner Justin Gatlin, who ran a 9.92 second 100 meter sprint to win the 2017 Men's 100 meter World Championship, has an official adjusted 40 yard dash time of 4.17 seconds. If this sub 4-2 time claimed by Dion was to be true, that would mean he would be one of the fastest men to have ever lived. Unfortunately for Dion, he performed this supposed feat in 1989 where the official times were hand timed, meaning the results could have varied anywhere from plus to minus 0.1 of a second, and in Dion's case, likely the latter. In the modern day, the official times are generated from a combination of handheld stopwatches and electronic timers to give the most accurate results. So back in the day, you were never 100% sure. In Dion's case, the official 40 yard time for him was listed at 4.27 seconds. But Dion claims that anyone who recorded a time like that should look in the mirror and slap what they see. To this day, Dion claims he ran a sub 4.2 but even if he didn't, and instead ran something like a 4.27, like scouts claim, that would put him in the top 0.1 percentile of all players to run the 40 since 1999, when official times were officially recorded. It looks like we'll never truly know if Dion ran a sub 4.240, but in Dion's defense, he's been a man of his word more times than not, as I've previously mentioned. Now, was Deion Sanders truly formed inside of a laboratory? Probably not. But nevertheless, he was a freak of an athlete and definitely one of the greatest we've ever seen. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned next week. I've got more coming your way.